Hello, my name is Gershon Pro, and I've been Challenger since set 2. Now what I'd like to talk about today is how to play the new patch, patch 13.8. I've been playing and watching a bunch of this patch, trying to prep for Mecha Cup, which is actually tomorrow, which will determine whether or not I make it to NA Regionals, so what I'd like to do is share the information I've gathered with all of you. There's been a decent amount of meta shifts here. As many of you probably know, Hacker got severely nerfed, meaning Hacker is far less prevalent. It's actually not dead. Nar and LeBlanc are still very, very playable and can win lobbies still, but there's not going to be three Hacker players per lobby. What's come to the forefront instead, however, is Mecha and Kai'Sa as the best comps in the game. So looking at my tier list right here, in S tier we have Kai'Sa, as well as three different Mech variations, Spell Slingers and Gadgetines as S tier. These are going to be the best comps in the game. If you can, you want to be playing one of these every game, but you don't have to play one of these. In addition, we have the 8 tier. Jin Flex, again, just a really good flexible comp. I can play around multiple carries. I'll talk about that later. Uh, Warwick Laser Core. Uh, this comp plays basically the same as it did last patch. If you want to know how to play this comp, go watch my previous video. I'll link it in the description. Quick Draw MF. Again, uh, Quick Draws with MF is still very good. Uh, you can play Kaisa to Tempo into it. Uh, I'll not cover it again today because I did cover it last time, so again, watch the video there. A 5 Anima Squad MF is very good. Uh, if you have a strong Anima Squad opener, you can play into this comp. I'll touch briefly on it later. Samira Flex is probably just worse than Mech Samira currently, uh, but it is still very playable. Samira is a solid unit right now, uh, so if you want to, you can play into Samira Flex. 7 Infinite Team TF slash Samira. Very strong, a bit weaker than last patch. Infinite Team did get nerfed. Uh, but if you can hit the 7 Infinity board with Ezreal, you can just win the lobby with this. Again, if you want to know how to play this comp, watch my last video. Uh, Animal Squad Vayne, this is what you'd be playing if you had, like, Spreadshot. Uh, and you can play into this. You could either play Animal Squad Vayne or Duelist Vayne. I think the Anima version is a bit better, uh, but both are very viable. Uh, Yasuo Reroll, this is a comp that has come into the meta currently, so I'll be talking about it later today. Uh, due to the fact that Yasuo's targeting got buffed, so his hero augment's actually good. Jinx got a huge buff, so Jinx Reroll is very, very powerful now. And Ash Reroll is still just going along, uh, being very strong. I think she struggled a bit versus hackers, so her average is a good bit up uh, from that. I won't be discussing the A- and below tier comps, uh, but Heart Sona, hearts are pretty good. Six Heart got a buff, but hearts have been just doing solid. Uh, not meta prevalent though. Uh, Lulu Rural, you just reroll Lulu and Pantheon, very good comp. Uh, Jax Rural, China thinks this comp is very, very good. Um, you just reroll for Jax 3, play 6 or 8 Brawler, uh, pretty good comp at top 4 -ing. 6 Duelist Vayne, you just go Vayne 3 with 6 Duelist. If you can, you get to 8 Duelist. If you're not hitting Vayne 3, you probably bought 4. If you have Vayne 3, you probably top 4. Vex Mascot still just doing it, same thing. Uh, you just play the 4 Mascot with Riff Walkers, you play Vex, and then you play Morgana plus Aesol along with it. Uh, solid comp if you have the tank items for it. You want to be priming tank items, not vex items. A LeBlanc reroll. Uh, it still plays the same as it did last patch, however, uh, it's significantly worse due to the fact that LeBlanc lost a lot of the Omni Vamp from Hacker. Uh, so keep that in mind. But again, if you want to know how to play LeBlanc reroll, I talked about it in my last video. Rock Solid Malphite basically plays the same as Vex Mascot's reroll. Um, you just have a different hero augment. And then Ezreal via reroll. Uh, this is a comp where you reroll for Ezreal 3 by 3 playing with Underground. And I may talk about this one today as well. As for item starts currently, the most contested item right now is most definitely Bow. Uh, due to the fact that so many of these top tier comps like Bow, right? Belveth likes Bow, Samira likes Bow, Samira likes Bow, TF likes Bow, Kaisa likes Bow, Nar likes Bow. So Bow is the most contested component right now. I think Tier is quite good as well. Tier is very good for Misfortune, it's good for Kaisa, it's good for Aurelian Soul. Um, and it's solid in Spell Slingers as well, so I think Tier is really good as well. I think Belt and Chain are fine as well. Mech is very prevalent, so being able to make it into some mech items is good. Cloak, theoretically, would also be decent because it makes Stoneflight and Dragon's Claw, but I haven't really seen anyone go for Cloak Start, and I'm not sure how great it is early game. Sword is okay. Again, some people like Sword. I personally dislike it. Um, as for Glove, I don't think Glove is very good at all. And I think Rod is, is quite good as well. Yeah, so I'd say like S tier is Bow. A tier is like Belt tier, B tier is like rod, sword, chain, and then C tier is probably cloak and glove. So what I'd like to get into now is talking about the different comps, and what I'd say is the best comp in the game is Kai'Sa Rural. In the current patch, Kai'Sa is just extremely, extremely strong. The thing with Kai'Sa is she stabilizes so well uh, at just 2 star or even 1 star. Whenever you play this comp, what you want to do is you want to roll down at 3-2 to try and hit a stable enough board. Something like Rel 2 plus Kai'Sa 1. If you can get a Kai'Sa 2, that's even better. 
Uh, and you should be able to win streak stage three. You can roll down again on forward one to try and streak on stage four. And then go level eight. I typically don't sit on level seven for Kaisa three. I like to go level eight before I go Kaisa three, but you can theoretically sit on level seven for uh, Kaisa three if you'd like to. As for itemization for this comp, we want to be prioritizing Kaisa itemization. Shiv and Gunblade are probably her best items here. Rageblade is really good in the mid game. I build Rageblade a lot, uh, but it's probably not even her best item here. Uh, you could run like Giant Slayer, you could run Guard Breaker, you could run Archangels, you could run Deathcap, you could even run Jeweled Gauntlet, but it's not that great. Um, so she has a lot of options. She doesn't necessarily need any specific build. You can realistically run three of her decent items and she'll do fine. Uh, tank items ideally just go on Garen, unless you have the Rel Carry Augment, which is Hold the Line, then your tank items should be going on Rel instead. They can really just run any tank items on Garen. And then leftover AP items you want to generally be putting on Misfortune here. So probably Shojin plus Deuce, so like Shojin plus Deathcap, Archangels, Giant Slayer, Guard Breaker, maybe even like Gunblade or Hand of Justice, although they're not quite as good on her. And Jewel Gauntlet would also be acceptable on her as well. The idea of this comp here is we're going to be playing around four Star Guardian to buff off our Kai'Sa as much as possible. I think without a Star Guardian spot, I don't really like playing six Star Guardian. You have to play two low quality of units here. Uh, so the board here is really just going to be the Garen Rel for Defender, Echo, Nyla, Kai'Sa for four Star Guardian. And then once you hit Syndra, of course, you can drop Nyla for Syndra. Tank items going on Garen, although the theoretically can go on Echo as well. And then I'm simply just running Morgana and Aesol in this comp because they're good flexible units. Uh, these slots could be anything, but I would default to Morgana Aesol here just because they're great units. Uh, Aesol will help soften stuff up for your most fortunate Kai'Sa. Uh, Morgana will help protect your Kai'Sa from assassins, as well as help her uh, shred through targets a bit easier. Especially if she doesn't have a shiv, uh, it'll help you shred through stuff. So this is quite a good build right here. Uh, one important variation is if you have a Star Guardian Crest. Uh, this is one of the best things you can hit. You put this on Misfortune here, and then you can go for six Star Guardian. So we probably just drop like the Morgana, let's say and put in Nyla. And now we have a nice six star guardian board. Your Misfortune is going to be doing a crazy amount of damage. Uh, you probably don't want to be running Shojin on Misfortune if you're running Star Guardian. Um, you can simply just go for like double damage item on her and she's just going to start wiping the board. She can completely just uh, shred through everything. Uh, with six star guardian, she'll be generating so much mana that she just uh, is constantly casting. Uh, so really strong comp right here. It's just super stable in the mid game. You can top four with Kai'Sa 2. You can top one with Kai'Sa 3. You have a bunch of options to play around in this comp. So very, very powerful. In terms of hero augments for this comp, the best things you can hit would be Hold the Line, which is the Rel 2 cost augment. Uh, it's going to make her very tanky, but items on her. You can also take Channel Pharomancy, which is the Rel support augment. Uh, pretty solid as well. Multi-Shot is going to be your best 3 cost option, the Kaisa carry augment. I don't think the Kaisa support augment is very good, but Multi-Shot is extremely powerful due to the way that it works with Quick Draw. Uh, which, by the way, you should only ever be running 2 Quick Draw with Kaisa, as she doesn't scale off of multiple Quick Draws, so keep that in mind. At terms of four cost augment here, uh, you could take either Misfortune augment, that would be acceptable. You could theoretically take Chrono Break, which is the Echo support augment, and you could also theoretically take the Garen support augment, but I don't think the Garen support augment is amazing in this comp. And then at five cost, the best thing you can hit is most definitely Empowered Reserves, which is the Cinder support augment. Uh, if I would probably steer away from four cost augments. I would try and either hit Multi Shot or Empowered Reserves, because remember, if you have a four cost augment, it has to come either with a three cost or a five cost. Uh, so you can typically force either multi-shot or empowered reserves with this comp. And empowered reserves is just very powerful. It's going to give your Kaisa and Misfortune a lot of extra damage. Uh, make sure you just have that full bench when you have it, and it's very, very strong. In terms of generic augments for this comp here, some good things you can hit, of course, are going to be Star Guardian plus one. You can go six Star Guardian, put the Star Guardian crest on Misfortune. Very, very powerful. In terms of other good augments here, I think Thrill is pretty solid for Kaisa. Uh, allows her to stain through stuff a lot better. A Jeweled Lotus is just a really good augment in this comp. If you can get to Misfortune, Axiom Arc is very good, but if you're just playing around Kai'Sa, I wouldn't recommend Axiom Arc that much. Uh, in addition, if you're in an AD Heavy Lobby, what you could theoretically consider is taking Defender plus one, and then dropping uh, either the Aesol or Morgana that we were talking about earlier, and playing for Defender. That's an option. Of course, over Aesol and Morgana, of course, you can also run, uh, so let's, let's say we, we don't have the Star Guardian plus one, you can you know run Aegis, so you can run Leona for Aegis if you need to. Uh, you could also theoretically run four defender over those slots as well. That's basically it for the Kaisa comp. Just roll down 3-2, be stable, and enjoy your free top four. And next we have what I would probably consider is the second best comp in the game, which is going to be Belveth plus Aurelian Soul Mech. So here's the idea of this comp. You want to fast eight with mech items and play mech plus Belveth slash Aesol carry. Velveth and Aesol are just very good units, and mech right now is extremely powerful. So the core of this comp is going to be the three mech, the Belveth, and the Aesol. 
I really like to run Morgana in this comp, especially if I don't have a Last Whisper on my Belveth. She just fits very nicely. Uh, this Urgot and Fiddle slots can realistically be anything. Um, they're just probably two of the best units you can run, but you have a lot of options. You could play Devil Belveth. You could play Devil Aesil. If you, let's say, like drop the Jax for Leona, you could run an Aegis in this slot. Maybe you run like Echo uh, for Aegis. Although Echo, actually, I wouldn't recommend running Echo. Uh, due to the fact that he taunts things away from your mech, they'll, they'll kill the Echo and then they'll retarget onto your Belveth. Uh, so maybe you'd rather run something like an Alistar for Aegis if you want to. Um, you could theoretically run a Samira in this comp as well. Uh, she's not a bad play at all. So in terms of itemization for this, the most important thing is going to be our mech itemization here. Best mech items are probably Dragon's Claw, Stone Plate, and Redemption. Uh, War Monks is also solid. Uh, in addition to that, Vow is debatably also one of the mech's best items. Uh, you can also go with Bramble Vest as another solid option. Then we're going to itemize either Belveth or Aesil. Uh, Belveth here really wants healing plus two, so Gunblade, BT, Hodge are all very good. I like Gunblade in this variation due to the fact that it can heal up your mech, although BT and Hodge are very good on her as well. Uh, Hodge is Hand of Justice. Deathblade is probably your best damage item, uh, but in terms of damage items, she's relatively flexible. You could go Deathblade, you could go Runons, uh, you could go Rapid Fire Cannon, you could go Giant Slayer, you could go Titans, you can go Last Whisper. Again, if you're not running Last Whisper, you need to run Morgana, uh, but Last Whisper is very good on her. Uh, you could even go Infinity Edge, so she has a bunch of damage item options. Aurelian Soul here, again, is relatively flexible with his itemization. I think his best items are Shoujin and Archangels. Uh, but you can go Shoujin, Archangels, Deathcap, Hand of Justice, Guardbreak, Giant Slayer, Jewel Gauntlet. So a bunch of options for Aurelian Soul in that case. And you're going to be carrying these guys right here. In terms of augments for this comp, Second Wind is going to be very, very powerful uh, to heal up your Garen. Throw the Hunt's going to be really good for Belveth, so I really like that augment a lot. Uh, Jeweled Lotus is great, you're just doing dual carry, uh, buffs up their damage a lot, a lot. In addition, Portable Forge is really powerful if you can get one of the mech items, being either Anima Visage or Eternal Winter, very good. Death to Defiance is also probably Belvet's best item if you can get it, uh, so great augment there. Celestial Blessing allows you to forego a healing item on your Belveth and run triple damage, which is very powerful. And then Scope Weapons is great in this comp, you're just going to backline your Belveth. And she is just going to sit here and hit stuff from across the map. You don't have to worry about her going into the back line and killing herself. Uh, she'll just sit here outputting a lot, a lot of damage for free. In terms of hero augments for this comp here, uh, you generally want to be playing around higher cost hero augments. At three cost, you could theoretically go for the jack support augment. Should be pretty good. Uh, he'll instantly die, give your whole team armor and attack speed. Uh, you could also go with the Morgana support augment as well, or even the Morgana carry augment. Either those should be okay. At 4 cost though, you typically want to either take the Garen Support Augment, that Augment is very, very powerful, uh, so highly recommend the Garen Support Augment, uh, but you could also go with the Belveth Carry Augment, which is Back for Blood, oh, or you could go with either Aurelian Soul Augment, both those should be good. I think Extinction Event is a bit better, uh, but Impact Velocity is solid as well, um, but it's a little hard to tailor for the correct Threat Augment, so a lot of times you're just going to be taking the Garen Support Augment, which is My Sword is Your Shield, very, very powerful Augment, has like a 4.0 average or something like that. Uh, with Garen 2 as like a 3.7 average or something, uh, so really, really good augment. At 5 cost, you're probably just going for Eclipse Prime, which is the Leona Support Augment. You could theoretically also go for the uh, Urgot Support Augment, uh, and then put it next to your Aurelian Soul and your Belveth, should give each of them 50% attack speed. That one should be a solid option as well. Generally, I would not be ever mecking your Leona. Uh, Mech Garen 1 is probably better than the Mech Leona 2. That being said, if you're into a lot of mechs, Mech Leona is an acceptable option to try and kill the opposing mech, but Garen is just so strong right now that you generally just want to be CCing stuff down with your Garen. It gives you infinite frontline, whereas Leona doesn't really tank that much for you. So yeah, this comp you really want to be going fast 8, uh, playing around this at level 8. You can roll down level 7 for this, but it's a little hard because you're trying to play around Belveth, Aesol, and Garen, which are all 4 costs. Trying to hit 4 costs at level 7 is a little bit inconsistent, uh, so keep that in mind. Alright, so next on our mech journey, we have Mech Samira. This is another variation of mech. It's pretty similar to the Belveth version, except here we're going to be carrying Samira. I think Belveth is a bit better than Samira, uh, but if you're hitting Samira 2 and Belveth 1, Samira 2 is of course going to be better. The core of this comp here is going to be the three mech with Garen as the tank items. So you want to be going like Redemption, Dragon's Claw, Brian Vest, Stoneplate, Warmogs, Protector's Vow, those are your best ones. And then you want to be itemizing your Samira next. Uh, Last Whisper is her best item, and then Infinity Edge, Giant Slayer, Deathblade, Hand of Justice, Guardbreaker, Runon's Hurricane, Gunblade are all good. Uh, Gunblade's good in this version because it can heal up your mech. AP items can go on Aurelian Soul if you hit them. Extra AD items can go on either Urgot or Ultimate Ezreal. Honestly, if I don't have Ultimate Ezreal, I'm probably just not playing Sure Shot. I don't think running Sivir or Ash is, is really worth the damage increase. 
You can consider running Sivir as an option, but I really don't like it. The Fiddle and the Urgot here don't have to be Fiddle and Urgot. They can be other things. Let's say you don't hit them. Uh, you could go with, you know, a Belveth here uh, for some extra damage. Uh, you could go with a Janna. You could go with, like, double Fiddlesticks as well. You could even theoretically run something like double Aurelian Soul. It is probably not the worst. Um, in addition, if you hit your Leona, again, you have the option of putting in Aegis. Uh, here, I don't mind running Echo in this variation, simply due to the fact that uh, I'm running Samira as my carry instead of Belveth as my carry, so Samira's not jumping into their backline. Uh, so if Echo taunts them and aggroes away and dies, they're not going to retarget onto my Samira, so it's fine. If you're running uh, Echo, you have the option of running Syndra as another one. You get that two-star Guardian in. Uh, quite good, you can start pulling in stuff from Revenge, stuff like Fiddlesticks and Urgots, uh, just to buff up your board a bit. Uh, so it's semi-flexible, the units you can be playing here. In terms of augments for this comp, it's going to have very similar augments to the Belveth version. So check out the Belveth version. I went through like all the augments, but like Second Wind, Jeweled Lotus, Celestial Blessing. Uh, those are really good. The only real difference here is at 4 cost, you're probably going to want to be taking a uh, Samira augment instead of like a Belveth or Aesol augment. Although I still think the best 4 cost augment here is going to be the Garen Support augment. If you can get the Garen Support augment, it's just the best thing. Uh, but the Samira augments are also quite acceptable here. Again, at 5 cost in this version, you could go with the Ezreal Augments is fine, or you could just go with Eclipse Prime, which is the Leona Support Augment. Uh, those should be good. Now what I'd like to talk about is the final mech comp I'm going to be talking about today, which is going to be 4 Ace. There's a couple other variations of mech comps that you can play, uh, but this variation here is very strong. This actually probably caps the highest of the three I'm talking about today. Again, I'm talking about these three just because they're the most common variations. It probably has the highest cap, but it's a bit harder to hit, uh, just due to the fact that you really need a Mordekaiser in order for this comp to be strong. So what's the idea of this comp? Again, we're going to be putting those tank items on the Garen, Redemption, Dragon's Club, Roundel Vest, Stoneplate, Warm Mox, Protector's Vow. Uh, and then we're going to be carrying Misfortune plus Samira. I think Misfortune is a bit better. If you're going Misfortune, you really want Shojin plus Deuce. That's going to be like Death Cap, Giant Slayer, Guard Breaker, Gunblade, uh, Hand of Justice, Jewel Gauntlet, Archangels. And then Samira, of course, can use Last Whisper plus Deuce, like... Infinity Edge, Giant Slayer, Deathblade, Reynolds Hurricane, Gunblade, Guardbreaker as well. So you really want to prioritize Misfortune items, but Samira items are fine as well. Uh, if you can get to him though, Mordekaiser 2 is going to be using uh, AP items extremely well. He's typically your win condition, he is going to be Mordekaiser 2. Uh, you could go like Deathcap and Protector's Vow. A uh, Vow is very good to get him to cast earlier. Deathcap is very good on him as well. Honestly, Chalice is solid because uh, it gives a bunch of starting mana, so you can Chalice him. He's just going to ult, and with the 4 Ace, if you can get to Mordekaiser 2, he'll just one-shot the entire board. And these Fiddle and Urgot slots here uh, are relatively flexible. Wukong here, if it's a AP heavy lobby and not an AD heavy lobby, you can drop the Wukong, put in Leona, and then put in an Aegis, so probably like an Echo right here. I really like Fiddle for the free CC. Urgot's fine as well. Janna is acceptable in this position. If you're carrying Misfortune, what I'll do a lot of the times is I'll simply just run a Kai'Sa, and I'll have a board that looks like this. So we're running the two-star Guardian with Echo Kai'Sa. Uh, it gives my Misfortune Quick Draw if she's the one with the items instead of the Samira. Of course, if you're carrying the Samira instead of the Misfortune, you can drop Kaisa and instead run Ultimate Ezreal to buff up your Samira if you'd like to. Uh, you could also just run, like, let's say, Double Fiddle, Double Urgot. Uh, other option you have here is you can simply run Aurelian Soul. He's going to help soften stuff up. You just have a bunch of free damage with this comp. Uh, so Aurelian Soul is another option for this board. One other variation you could do, of course, is I could be running Syndra in this slot as well. And then I could also theoretically drop this for Kaisa if I'm carrying this fortune and run something like this. So this is another variation you can do. This comp, you really want to have a lot of money. You want to be going fast eight. You should not be rolling for this comp on level seven. If you're rolling at level seven, you should steer towards either the Belveth or the Samira variation I showed earlier. Again, you really need to be hitting Mordekaiser in this comp to play. In terms of generic augments for this comp, Second Wind is probably one of the best things you can hit due to the fact that it'll have your Garen be a lot tankier. In addition, there are a couple other solid augments. I think Celestial Blessing is pretty solid in this comp. I think Jeweled Lotus is very good as you're going multi-carry, so you're just going to get a bunch of free damage that way. Again, Portable Forge, you can go with one of the Garen items being either Animal Visage or Eternal Winter. You can go with a, either Monazane or Zonny's Paradox, which are very, very powerful for Misfortune. So those are some of the best generic augments. Again, the generic augments for all the mech comps are relatively similar. In terms of hero augments, however, for this comp, again, you can go with the Draven Support augment, Ruthless Blades, pretty solid in this comp because you're running Draven for the 4 Ace. Uh, you can go with the Jack Support Augment as well, if you're going to run him. It should give your whole team some armor and attack speed at 4 cost here. Again, the best Augment you can take is the Garen Support Augment, although the Samira, either Samira Augment or either MF Augment should be acceptable as well. 
And then if I'm offered a 5 cost, I'll basically always just take a Mordekaiser Augment. Uh, other one's fine, it doesn't really matter that much. Uh, you simply just want the Mordekaiser Augment due to the fact that it gives you a free Mordekaiser and allows you to actually reliably play this 4 Ace board. So Ace Crest really isn't that good. You can run Ace Crest. Um, what I'll do if I have Ace Crest is maybe I'll just drop like the Samira here and just simply Ace Crest the Aurelian Soul. Uh, that's an option as well, but I don't love it. So yeah, this comp, really high cap, really expensive to play though. You really need the Guarantee plus Misfortune 2 in order to have this board be valuable, so make sure you have a lot of money when you're playing it. All right, next we're gonna be talking about Spell Slingers. Now, Spell Slingers are just a very, very consistent comp. Now, the most reliable way to play Spell Slingers is gonna be playing four Ox Force, four Spell Slinger with Nico plus Twisted Fate dual carry. In my opinion, tank items in this comp are relatively fake. Tank items would theoretically go on Echo, but a lot of times you'll just put them on Annie in the mid game. But realistically, I don't like playing this comp if I have a bunch of tank items. What I prefer to do is just go for three damage items for Twisted Fate and three damage items for Nico. Your frontline really just doesn't scale off of tank items that well. Before you hit Janna, you typically just run Sona in this comp. In terms of Twisted Fate itemization, Shiv is his best item. You typically want to go Shiv plus two. Jewel Gauntlet's very good. Giant Slayer is very good. Uh, Rapid Fire Cannon's actually very good. I think it's a bit better than Rage Blade. Rage Blade's also solid though. Archangels and Deathcap are acceptable. Gunblade's acceptable, although I don't love it. Hand of Justice is also acceptable on him. Nico itemization here. Uh, in this variation, I would say Shoujin is definitely best in slot on her. If you're going with like a four-star guardian variation, Shoujin isn't the greatest on her, but Shoujin is good in this variation. Jewel Gauntlet is probably her next best item. Uh, but then Guardbreaker, Giant, Slayer, Deathcap, Archangels uh, are very good on her as well. Gunblade is okay. I don't love Gunblade on Nico though. I don't think Gunblade Nico is very good, but it is somewhat acceptable. In addition, I actually think Morello is very good on Nico. Um, she gives you some anti-heal. She actually spreads Morello quite good. She's like probably the best Morello spreader in the game. Uh, so definitely consider Morello if you're playing this comp. Uh, if you don't have Morello though, Sunfire a lot of times is what you'll just make with your frontline items. Uh, you can go with Spark over Shiv, but Shiv is typically just better uh, anyway, so you typically want to be prioritizing the Shiv here. And yeah, this is just the generic variation you're going to be playing. If you have a Spell Slinger plus one, uh, what you can opt to do is simply drop to six Spell Slinger for Ox Force by dropping the Echo. Uh, that is one thing you can do, uh, so keep that in mind. Another thing you could do if you have Spell Slinger plus one is simply drop out of the four Ox Force. Uh, so let's say you're playing Sona. Uh, you could simply opt to drop the, let's say, Viego and Alistar here. And then you have Spell Slinger plus one. So you're probably putting that on the Echo. And then now we do have an open slot. Um, so you can do whatever you'd like with that. Cinder is very good. You just pull stuff in. A lot of times you just have to play three Star Guardian in this comp. It's a little awkward, uh, but it's not the end of the world. Uh, Asol is just a good generic unit you can play. Uh, I really like to run him here. Or you could just play like a 5 cost, like a Fiddlesticks. Uh, I should give you a bunch of extra frontline, uh, which is not the worst. So yeah, this comp is just pretty consistent. You just roll down level 7, level 8 for Twisted Fate and Nico. Uh, if you hit TF2 plus Nico 2, you can typically just top 4 off of that. It's just a generically strong comp. It's not very like augment dependent or anything. You just need to have decent items for it, and it's going to be strong. In terms of augments for this comp, Jeweled Lotus is going to be very good. Make sure you're not building the Jeweled Gauntlet if you have that, but it's going to buff up your Twisted Fate and Nico damage a lot. Uh, in addition to Jeweled Lotus, Ox Force plus one is pretty solid. It allows you to run four Ox Force uh, pretty easily. Spell Slinger plus one is very good. I talked about what to do if you have Spell Slinger plus one. If you have Ox Force plus one, uh, what you can do is you can run something like this. And then we're running seven units here. So again, you can just run a free flex unit uh, like a Cinder here. For the final slot, you typically want to be Ox Forcing your Echo to give him those nice tank stats. In addition, uh, Portable Forge is pretty solid. Monazane is very good on Nico, so consider that. Uh, and then in addition, you can also go with Zhonya's Paradox on either Twist of Fate or Nico. Uh, should be powerful as well. If you hit Janna 2, you can consider itemizing your Janna 2. Uh, she's just typically going to use like Shojin, Archangels, uh, that type of stuff. So typically just similar to Nico itemization there. In terms of hero augments in this comp, at 2 cost you probably just want to go with the anti-support augment, which is Burning Spirit. At 3 cost, there's not any amazing 3 cost augments. If you don't have Magic Resist Shred, you could theoretically go with the All-Star support augment, um, but I don't love it. At 4 cost, I think the Twisted Fate support augment is very good, which is Gear Shift. I think Easy Being Green, which is the Nico support augment, is extremely, extremely powerful. If you have Easy Being Green, you typically can just go with like 2 Shoujins, uh, throw a Shoujin on Janna, throw a Shoujin on Nico. Uh, you could even theoretically run an Aesol and run Shoujin on him, and now you just have a bunch of free damage on this board. Uh, so Easy and Green is very, very powerful. And in terms of 5 cost tier, the best one is just going to be Category 5, which is the Janna Carry Augment. You want to put items on her, and she's going to do a bunch of free true damage for your board. Uh, so very good there.
My final S tier comp is going to be Gadgetine Gnar. Now personally, I only recommend playing this comp if you have Gadgetine plus one. So what that means is your board at level seven is typically just going to be the seven units here. Uh, playing around the three hacker five gadgetine. Uh, typically people gadgetine spat their LeBlanc, but I think gadgetining spatting your uh, Shen and Pike is also acceptable. So there's actually two variations here, but I'll first cover is the hacker variation, which you probably were all used to from last patch here. Uh, you just go Gnar with Bloodthirster plus two. So like Titans, Quicksilver, Last Whisper, Deathblade uh, are all good options on with him. Uh, Runons is also fine. Uh, and then you can put tank items on Annie because she gets the Gadgetine buff, making her tankier. And then what a lot of people will do is they put Gadgetine on LeBlanc and then throw AP items on her. So like Archangels, Deathcap, Jewel Gauntlet, Shojin, Giant Slayer, that type of stuff. Um, and she just sits in the back line and does a bunch of free damage. So this variation of the comp is still quite powerful. Um, it's good. But honestly, there is a new variation of this comp that I think is a bit better. Uh, so what you do in that variation is you actually just completely drop out of the hackers. And you're going to run these guys on the front line. And what we're going to do instead here is we are going to run Sona. This is going to give us Heart and Spell Slinger. And then in addition to this, we're going to be running Garen uh, for the free front line. And then the final slot here is usually just typically going to be Alistar. So we're running no hacker here. But what you're going to go for is you're going to go for Nar 3 plus Sona 3 at level 7. And you can carry AP items on Sona. So her best items are going to be blue buff and archangels. She can also use death cap quite well. A giant slayer, jewel gauntlet, guard breaker, those items should be okay on her, but they don't work quite as well as just raw AP like death cap or archangels due to the fact that they won't scale her healing. Again, you're just going to go the same items on Nara that we were doing earlier. Uh, Last whisper is probably a lot higher priority now though that he's going to be hitting the frontline units. And then tag items here, you can either go on Annie or Garen. A lot of times you'll just be putting them on Annie. You sometimes go for Annie, uh, Annie three star. Um, but if you can get to the Garen too, you maybe just want your tank items on the Garen. Gadgetine spat here, a couple options. You can go on Sona. Uh, that's what I typically see. But I think Gadgetine spat Garen is also quite good. Makes him very, very tanky. Uh, so this variation of the comp is probably better right now. Um, you're just going to be going for Sona plus Nara dual carry. Uh, very good. Again, tank items can either go on Garen or Annie here. In terms of augments for this comp, you really want to be having Gadgetine plus one. Other ones, the cybernetic augments, Probably Cybernetic Shell or Cybernetic Uplink are very good because you typically want to be spreading your items with the Gadgetines anyways. Uh, so highly recommend that augment there. In addition, Jeweled Lotus is just uh, generically good if you're going to be running this variation. Uh, but it's not the best because Nar's spell already crits, but that, that augment's just broken anyways. Thrill the Hunt's good for Nar as it's going to heal him up. Uh, Celestial Blushing should be acceptable as well, although not the greatest. Uh, so those are some good augments here for the comp in terms of hero augments at two cost there's nothing super amazing for this comp uh, i don't love the annie augments in this comp here at three cost either than our augments are acceptable uh, you could also probably go with power grid which is the sona support augment another option you can go with is you can go with recursion matrix and just run shen over garen in this point a recursion matrix plus the gadgetine damage resistance should stack so your units will just like not die if you have recursion matrix um, so recursion matrix shen is a great option at four cost, uh, you can go with either Garen augments. The Garen support augment is just generically going to be very good, going to make your board very, very tanky, hard to take down with all that gadgeting bonus resistances. But one secret thing you can do uh, that's extremely, extremely powerful is if you can get the Garen carry augment, what you're going to want to do is you're going to want to go gadgeting on the Garen, and then you're actually going to put your 80 items on Garen. So typically what you'll do is you'll go Bloodthirster plus a damage item. So let's say, for instance, Infinity Edge, you could also go like Deathblade in this slot as well, maybe even Titans. So if we go Infinity Edge here, and now your Garen with the Garen Carry Augment, which is full power to sword, is going to be extremely powerful. He's going to get that free 30% damage amp and 30% damage resist, making him very tanky and very strong, and he's just going to start one-shotting boards. It is an extremely cap version of this comp if you can hit the Garen Carry Augment. I would obviously only itemize your Garen like this if you have the Garen Carry Augment. So again, very strong comp. I would only play on the Gadgetine plus one. I don't think three Gadgetine is strong enough right now to justify playing, but if you hit like a Gadgetine crest at 2-1, highly recommend playing into Nar. Very, very powerful still. So one thing I forgot to mention is if you are playing the Nar Gadgetine comp, Gadgetine is currently bugged. So that way if Prankster activates, you actually lose the Gadgetine buff. So make sure no matter what you do, you do not play Prankster when you're playing Nar Gadgetines. Uh, it obviously sounds good to play Prankster with your Nar, because it's just free sustainability for him, but do not run it. He's going to lose the Gadgetine buff, and he's just going to get one shot, so do not do that. All right, so now what I'm going to do is talk about a few of the A-tier comps, uh, how to play them, some of my thoughts on them. Uh, so what I'd like to talk about first is the gen variation. I've talked about gen, uh, how to play this comp in a previous video before, 
Uh, my real opinion on this comp, however, is that prioritizing Jin as a carry is not the best. What I've actually been really liking to do recently is I drop into three Renegade like so, and I run a Relian Soul actually as a carry. So I'll go like Archangels plus Shojin on him. You can just go generic A Soul augment, uh, items so like Death Cap, Archangels, Jewel Gauntlet, Hand of Justice, Guardbreaker, Giant Slayer, uh, that type of stuff. And then you either dual carry him with Jin or Viego. So AD items will go on Jin, AP items will go on Viego. Uh, and then here, of course, we're running six units. So what I like to do is typically run for my frontline. If I have frontline items, I think the best uh, unit to run here is actually going to be Aatrox. You can put your tank items on Aatrox. Us uh, generic tank items like Warmogs, you know, Declaw, Stoneplate, that type of stuff. Uh, very good on Aatrox here. And then you just kind of have a free slot here to run whatever you want. You can run Aegis. Uh, sometimes you'll just end up running for Renegade because a lot of times you don't have a fifth Renegade you want to be putting in. Uh, in addition, you have a couple other options here. Again, you could also just run Echo for Aegis. Uh, I a lot of times will just run Morgana here though, uh, and I'll just like not go Last Whisper, and then I'll just have Morgana here. Uh, it gives a bunch of free CC. Uh, so a version like this is very good. Uh, when I'm playing Rift Walkers, I actually think the best four cost augments are the Asol augments. Both of them are very good. Uh, so Impact Velocity and Extinction Event, very, very powerful in this comp. I'm actually looking for those at four cost. Uh, the Age Truck Support augments also very good uh, at four cost as well. So you can either play the uh, 5 Renegade version I showed at the beginning, or you can play a version like this. If I have a Renegade spat, what I'll typically do is I will actually throw it on a Reliant Soul, and then we can just run 5 Renegade. So if you have a Renegade spat, the board can look like this. This is a very powerful board right here. I also highly recommend something like this if you have a Renegade spat. Uh, in terms of augments for this comp, generic augments that are going to be good for it. Jeweled Lotus is just a bunch of free damage for this comp. I also recommend that. Renegade plus 1 is going to be very good. Rift Rocker plus 1 is decent. It's going to buff up your Zac a good bit. Makeshift armor is solid as well, I do the fact that you have a bunch of units that should be benefiting from it. Um, Exiles is a bit harder to position around, but I think it's pretty good in this comp as well. In addition, Pike itemization, you can actually sometimes throw items on Pike here. Uh, Morello is decent on Pike, but not if you're running Asol, you should, probably should not be putting Morello on him. But I actually think this item here, Vow, is Pike's best item. Uh, in general, if you're running Pike, I love to build Vow on him. The reason for this is it's going to have him almost insta-cast. Uh, let me throw Pike back up there. He's going to almost always insta-cast with Val, and then a lot of times the Val will give him enough tankiness to actually double-cast. So a lot of times you'll have a double-casting pike if you have Val. Uh, really, really like that. Again, for hero augments for this comp here, uh, one option, you can go with the Alistar carry augment at 3 cost and put items on him. At 2 cost, you can simply just go with the Hextech Retribution, which is the Camille support augment. At 4 cost, you want to be looking for either an Asol augment. You could go with either Jin augment as well, that should be fine, or the Aatrox support augment should be acceptable. At 5 cost, you're probably just looking for Eclipse Prime, which is the Leona support augment. Uh, at 2 cost, you can also theoretically go for Small Game Hunter, which is the Pike support augment, but I do think Hextech Retribution is a bit better. Uh, if you have a very good admin, of course, uh, you can run Camille, and then you can theoretically uh, run admin if you want to over this ASOL here. Um, so what you may do is run like LeBlanc or Warwick. It's not the greatest variation though. A lot of times I'll just run the Camille with no admin anyways because the admin units aren't good. A lot of times I really just like to run this ASOL in this comp. I'll keep that in mind. Um, and yeah, that's basically it for the Jin comp. Just some updates as uh, the meta has developed and people have figured out how to play this comp a bit better. Uh, there's quite a few variations you can do with this. I like it quite a bit. All right, next we have Jinx Reroll. Now, the thing with Jinx Reroll is Jinx just got buffed this patch, so this comp is going to be very, very good now. What you want to do is you want to be playing this only with the Jinx Carry Augment, which is Get Excited, and at level 6, you want to reroll for Jinx 3. Your board at level 6 is typically just going to be 5 Anima plus Defender, so you'll be playing Riven, Nasus, Jinx, Vayne, plus Silas, plus a Defender unit at level 6, going for Jinx 3. And then once you get Jinx 3, you're going to push levels and go level 8. Once you're level 8, you have the potential to go for Riven 3 if you'd like to. Uh, and then you typically want to also go for Misfortune 2. You're going to be then be throwing your spare AP items on Misfortune. Tank items typically go on Riven. They can theoretically go on Garen, but I much prefer them on Riven in this comp. Um, and then Jinx itemization here. She has a bunch of items she wants. She's not that needy with items. Shojin is good. Shiv is good. Giant Slayer is good. Hand of Justice is good. Uh, Guard Breaker is good, Infinity Edge is good, Jewel Gauntlet is good, Death Cap is good, Archangels is good. She's actually a mixed damage carry, she does both uh, physical and magic damage. Uh, so the split damage items like Giant Slayer, Guard Breaker, Hand of Justice are actually very good on her because they buff both her AD and her AP. Uh, so keep that in mind. My variation here I have level 8 is simply just Garen here because he's a good unit, Echo because he gives Prankster and is a good unit, and then Kaisa to buff up the Misfortune. Uh, you probably wouldn't run the Kaisa if you don't have Misfortune items. You would run something else, just like a random Frontliner, a random 5 cost, should be fine. Uh, or like an Aegis. 
Uh, but if you have misfortune items, you, you know you have that two three item misfortune in the late game, which is typically how you're going to cap yourself out. Uh, then Kaisa is going to be ideal here to buff up your misfortune as much as possible. Uh, so this is really just your board. Uh, in terms of augments, again, hero augment, you should always be playing this with Get Excited. Uh, in terms of generic augments, Jewel Lotus is very good, going to buff your Jinx and your misfortune. Uh, other augments that are good, Prankster Crest is pretty solid in this comp. Uh, Prankster Crest is great. You should be able to get like two Prankster early for free. It's really strong in the early game. And then you can get three Prankster in the late game, uh, which should give you some free CC onto the enemy team. In terms of other augments, you can go. Animal Squad plus one is fantastic. If you have Animal Squad plus one, you can just consider going for a seven Anima Squad board, or you can drop this Nasus. Uh, so if I have Anima Squad plus one, I'll typically either put it on the Echo or the Kaisa here, uh, just depending. So let's say we throw it on the Kaisa here. Uh, we can now theoretically just drop the Nasus, or we can drop one of these frontliners. Uh, what you may also do is just Anima Squad the Echo, drop the Kaisa, and play Silas for seven Anima. Um, but it's actually probably a bit stronger to simply just drop the Nasus. Uh, you run Kaisa. And then you get a free slot in this front line, so maybe we just run an Aegis like Liana, or we run a 5 cost like Fiddlesticks or Urgot or something like that. Uh, so keep that in mind. If you have two Anima Squad plus ones, though, you should always be playing 7 Anima Squad. Uh, with two Anima Squad plus ones, it's definitely just worth it. Uh, Monazane and Zhonya's are also very good in this comp. Monazane, you're typically just going to be putting on Misfortune. Zhonya's you could put on either Jinx or Misfortune, uh, shouldn't matter that much. So yeah, very comp powerful comp right now. Uh, you want to be playing this relatively from ahead. You're going to try and win streak stage 2, stage 3. Roll down 3, 2 for that Jinx 2, upgraded board, and then go Jinx 3 and get your top 4. The next comp that's going to come into the meta is the Yasuo Rebo comp. Now the reason this comp has come into the meta is due to the fact that Yasuo's targeting has been fixed, so now he actually targets correctly. Uh, and he can just simply wipe entire wards. So what you're going to want to do with this comp is roll at level 6 for Yasuo 3, and then potentially Fiora 3, Lee Sin 3, Malphite 3 if you can hit them. Uh, Yasuo Itemization, you're going to want a healing plus 2. Uh, so Hand of Justice is his best item, but Bloodthirst and Gar uh, Gunblade are also acceptable. And then your plus 2 can be Deathcap, Titans, Archangels, Jewel Gauntlet, uh, those items right there. Giant Slayer and Guard Breaker are somewhat acceptable, although a bit worse than the other ones. Uh, other items, you typically just put tank items on Fiora, and then you're going to be putting your spread items on Nyla. So Lockets are very good in this comp. Duelists just love Lockets. Chalice is very good. Buff up your Yasuo as much as possible. He's your primary carry. He'll just kill the enemy backline for free. Once you get the Yasuo 3, what you're going to do is you're going to want to go level 8 and put in 6 Duelist. Uh, so what we're probably going to be running is like Twist of Fate plus Vein here. Once you get that, you'll go level 8, play the 6 Duelist. Uh, if you have the Duelist plus 1, what I would typically opt to do is drop the Lisa and ML fight and actually play 8 Duelist. Uh, so you simply just drop the Lee Sin Malphite. Uh, you're going to come in here and you're going to just be playing this Kale. And then you can just run a Alistar or an Annie for the Ox Force. And this would be your board if you have the Duelist plus one. Uh, so if I have that Duel Spat, the board would look like this. Of course, if you don't have the Duel Spat, I think you're typically wanna be going to be want to play around the Super's variation. In terms of augments for this comp, your augment, you really need the uh, Yasuo Carry augment, which is... Ways of the Wanderer, or something like that, is its name. Uh, so you really need that to play this comp. I wouldn't play it without that. In terms of other augments, Thrill the Hunt's going to be good. Uh, Battle Mage is going to be very good to buff up your Yasuo. Jeweled Lotus is going to be very good to buff up your Yasuo. Makeshift Armor is just generally good in Duelist comps like this. Uh, Celestial Blessing should make your Yasuo even tankier. Uh, so that's another good option as well. And yeah, this is really just the Yasuo comp. Uh, if you hit this Yasuo 3, it should be a top 4 very, very powerful comp. The final comp I'd like to talk about today is Ash Rural. Uh, just because I wanted to make a quick note as the best way of playing Ash Rural, as my opinion has slightly changed. The best variation here is really going to be this right here with 4 Baller, 4 Laser Core, and 3 Sure Shot. If you can get to Mordekaiser, you'll typically just run Mordekaiser over Samira right here. Uh, but you can't always get to the Mordekaiser, so you'll typically just run the Samira right here. Uh, and what you ideally want to be doing is running tank items on Blitzcrank. You can theoretically run your tank items on Renekton, but Blitzcrank is ideal. He's just a tankier unit. You want to be going Ash 3 for sure, plus Blitzcrank 3 and potentially Renekton 3 in this comp. Uh, so whenever you're playing it, you're going to roll down a bit at 3-1, roll to like 30 gold, and then you're going to slow roll at 50 gold for the rest of stage 3 at level 5 to try and hit the Ash 3, Blitzcrank 3. Uh, Ash Atomization here, Deathblade is good, Last Whisper is good, Giant Slayer is good, Runons is also good. Uh, I don't love a ton of items outside of that, uh, so I would go with those. I think Triple Damage is best for her. You can go healing on her, but I don't think it's that great. Blitzcrank can just use any tank on him, so he's just a good unit. And yeah, this is just going to be your board. At level 5, you're probably not going to be running the Samira, you're not going to be running the Warwick, of course. So your board's probably going to look something like this at level 5, and then you can slowly add in those units at higher levels. Here, Augments here, you really need that Ash Augment uh, to play it, which is going to be Laser Focus, the Ash Carry Augment. 
Uh, and then in terms of generic augments, you can go in this comp. Laser core plus one should be solid in this comp. You know, just free laser core for the whole team. In addition, you can also go with a healing augment like Celestial Blessing or Thrill the Hunt due to the fact that Ash doesn't want to be running those anyways. And then Featherweights is also a solid one to buff up your attack, uh, Ash's attack speed, uh, make her do a lot more damage. And Second Wind should also be good if you have this really, really tanky Blitzcrank right here. Uh, a lot of times he'll live to the Second Wind proc, and then you just basically get a free extra like 5 seconds of health on your Blitzcrank. So very, very powerful if you do that. So this here is the Ash comp. Uh, so the final comp I want to talk about, I do have this in A- minus tier, but I didn't talk about it in a previous video, so I wanted to discuss it today, is Ezreal via Rural. Uh, the idea of this comp is you typically want to play it with either the Ezreal carry augment or the Vi carry augment. I think Unrelenting Force, which is the Vi carry augment, is a bit better, uh, but the Ezreal carry augment is also uh, pretty solid. And what you're going to want to do in this comp is you're going to want to refill for Vi 3 and Ezreal 3 at level 6, and then potentially these in 3 Malphite 3. A lot of times what you can do is you can go for a really deep underground cash out with this comp, go for like a 4 heist or something like that. Sometimes you'll be playing like 4 underground uh, at level 6. You can also just simply run 3 underground at level 6 and just take every 1 cash out as well. Uh, both those variations are acceptable here. Uh, itemization here, if you have Unrelenting Force, you really want Bloodthirster on your Vi. I think Bloodthirster is your best item with Unrelenting Force. Uh, if you don't have Unrelenting Force, don't run the Bloodthirster though. Other good Vi items, Dragon's Claw, Bremble Vest, Stone Plate, War Mogs. Uh, Titans is good with Unrelenting Force. Some people say it's not good, but I still think it's pretty good with her. Um, so those are all good items for Vi. Ezreal here, you typically want blue buff plus two. So Death Gap, Jewel Gauntlet, Giant Slayer, Archangels. Now Archangels a bit worse though, because he doesn't scale that well. A uh, Gunblade is also acceptable. I would typically run double damage though, if I'm not running Ezreal with the carry augment. Uh, if you have the carry augment though, you could theoretically drop like the Death Gap here for like Gunblade and greed that, that would be acceptable as well. Typically with this, I like to run the supers. And then when you push levels, you can throw in as many quick draws as possible, like so. A couple other variations you can do here. Of course, if you get the ultimate Ezreal, uh, you can drop one of these for the ultimate Ezreal. going to be very good. And then another great unit to put in is the Alistar, uh, just because he gives you Aegis and Mascot. So typically at level 6, you're just going to be playing the Ezreal Vi plus 3 supers, plus like Lucian for quick draw. And then as you level up, you'll put in more quick draws and potentially Alistar and Ezreal. Uh, if there's a lot of AP in your lobby and you want Aegis. And then ultimate Ezreal is just great to buff up your Ezreal with Parallel. They bug fixed it, so Parallel actually works with Rising Spell Force. Of course, if you don't hit the 3-star supers, you can theoretically drop the supers here uh, and run something else. Uh, so maybe we just run the Quick Draws in this position, and then you just run an extra Aegis. Uh, so you could run something like this if you don't hit the 3-star supers, but if you have the 3-star supers, you probably want to keep them. Uh, so it looks something like this. In terms of augments for this comp here, Quick Draw plus 1 should actually be pretty good in this comp here. Uh, in addition, Axiom Mark is very good, as well as just getting chain cast with it. So I highly recommend it. Second Wind, very good if you have that tanky Vi, it's going to help her sustain a lot more. Uh, Jeweled Lotus is just great to buff up your Ezreal's damage as well. Uh, so this is just the Ezreal Vi Rural comp. Uh, pretty good comp due to the fact that uh, you can play around Quick Draw, uh, plus a tanky Frontline. It just has a lot of high damage output. This is a relatively first or eighth comp, at least from my experience though. If you hit the comp, a lot of times you'll just go top two, uh, but sometimes you just Get stuck at level 6, don't hit your units, and just die. So keep that in mind. Make sure you're playing this from a good position, because if you're not from a good position, you're probably going to bot for. Of course, there's playable comps that I didn't talk about today. Again, I talked about some of these other comps in my last video, my 13.7 video. So I'll link that in the description. Make sure to go watch that if you want to see the comps I talked about there. Um, in addition, I made a comp, uh, a comp video talking about most of these comps at the very beginning, at the very beginning of the set. Uh, and a lot of those are pretty similar. So check that out as well. If there's comps on this list that I didn't talk about that you're interested in learning about, uh, feel free to go check that out and I'll talk about them there. As always, thank you for watching. Make sure to subscribe if you enjoy my content and want to see more, see my next patch update videos. I'll probably make an update video as to how the meta shifted next week after I've gotten to see a bit more. And yeah, make sure to leave any suggestions for videos you'd like to see and thank you for watching.